Welcome everybody to another episode of This Week in Real Estate, where we're jumping into different aspects of real estate, the market, not just market trends, but also new technologies within the market. How does that help you sell a house? How does it help you buy a house? And we've had a lot of uh, great questions lately about our market reports and how they're different and why they're different. So I'm going to jump into that briefly. But before I do, March Madness. Isn't it chaos what's happening right now? March Madness is going. St. Patrick's Day is happening. The weather's starting to shift a little bit. We just got over uh, spring and forward, which is horrible, by the way. But anyways, uh, yeah, a lot of cool things happen in the month of March. And wouldn't you know it if we didn't finally get baseball back as well. So let's go Red Sox. Let's jump right into our market reports this week. So market reports are different for us. OK, uh, it gives us a unique perspective of your not just your city and your zip code, because when you start tracking data. Right. Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. And this is how as us as consumers and we go on these national search engines, they pull us in because we're like, oh, that's the price of X and it's not real. But what did they do? They just started gathering your data, right? So let me show you what I'm talking about. When I say your city is not your zip code, here's our market report for right here, just the city of Glendora, average list price in the city. It's a 9% increase uh, in the last 30 days from today, right? So when I'm talking rolling 30s, if two more properties come on the market, tomorrow this number will adjust. So this is how you get some of the best accurate information. But this is what I want you to notice. It, it tells you right here, look at the top of the report, criteria is just the city of Glendora. And if we looked at these 30 day trends, right? 9% increase, days on market went down by 52%, sold homes is uh, up 30 or up 3%. And then our new listings is down. It's because we need listings, right? And this is the entire city again. Now watch this. When I say your city is not your zip code, I live in the 91741 zip code. So look at that. We went from a 1-1 to a 1-3 list price, right? Average days on market went up. Of course, if you're, the price is going to go up, you would expect it to sit a little bit longer. And that's also down right over the last 30 days. So interesting when we say ready. So just focus on the one right on the 116. So if we know that the city is not the zip code and that changes, then what happens when I get around my neighborhood? Right. Well, look at my neighborhood. My neighborhood drops to 924. Now, that's not a bad neighborhood to live in. Let's be real. Right. But here's the reality. You can't base your valuation off what some search engine tells you about your city, nor should you be basing it on your zip code. Because if I thought, oh, well, I live in the 91741, my average list price should be 1.3. And then a realtor shows up at your door and says, sorry, man, it's only 924. Right. That's a massive distinction. That's a problem. Now, when you're tracking data, right, you have lag measures and lead measures and lag measures. It's there's nothing you can do about the past. Right. That's happening right now. So some of the best criteria that we have tells us month by month by month, let's track the market. You might even be able to say week by week, right? But if you're trying to pin the sale of your house at the top of the market, right? Junior high economics, buy low, sell high. If we're trying to pin this at the top of the market, then you wanna actually be looking at stuff daily, right? Weekly, okay, small shift, small shift, okay, small shift, flat, okay, small shift, okay, let's, oops, I might've missed the top, let's unload now. Right. So it's it the best lead indicators we can get. Uh, we're trying to give to you and our market reports are that way. What I love about the market reports as well is the ease. Right. So if you're if you're like, hey, in you know three to six months, I'm thinking about selling a house, whether it's your primary, whether, whether it's an investment property, reach out and let's just get you on a market report and start tracking that thing. I would honestly I'd say twice a month. As you get closer, you might want to kick that up to once a week. That way you can start adjusting and saying, OK, I'm getting hyper focused now on when the best time to strike is in order to track that data. Right. So uh, our market reports, phenomenal, fresh rolling 30 day data, easy for you to control when you do and do not get them. If you just bought a house, check that thing quarterly. Right. You check your 401ks quarterly. You check your retirement plans quarterly. Check this asset in your net worth quarterly as well. So just wanted to touch bra uh, briefly on the market reports. Look, we got some great events coming up this week as, uh, as well. Scroll down, you'll see where our community partners events are. Uh, we just had a great fundraiser from McKinley, turned out uh, excellent. Uh, we've got two men events coming up, one at um, Purpose Church in Pomona, the other one, Glendora, uh, Grace Church of Glendora. Yours truly will be a guest speaker at that. So I look forward to seeing you there next Saturday. Uh, anyways, you guys have a great week. We'll see you on the next episode of This Week in Real Estate. And until then, 
you'll remember a couple of things. You're loved, you're valued, and you're appreciated. Have a great week. We'll see you soon.